and a baby was conceived. And in less than a year, we got Zachary. That's history. That's penned history. And you can't change that. You can't relive history. Isn't that the craziest thing? There's two things that never change, time and change. You can't stop them. You can't move them. Time is always going to march on. Change is always going to happen. And as people of God, as people of power, as people of anointing, as people of purpose, as people of destiny, we've got to determine in our hearts that we refuse to allow our history just be written on accident. But we are going to be purpose. We are going to have understanding. And we are going to make history not just survive. All two of you said amen. Glory to God. Some of you just survived this year. And you look back over 2009, and you're saying, well, you know, I didn't do anything. I am absolutely no different this year than the last. There are people like that. In fact, there are probably more people like that than more people not like that. Where you look at your life, and you can look in, and your whole last decade goes like this. It's just some smooshed piece of... Life, that you have a hard distinction of picking anything out of that has significance. And that happens when people just sit back and let history roll. But a history maker is a person who's willing to walk by faith and not by sight. A person who's willing to say, I call those things which are not as though they already are. A person who's willing to say, I refuse to sit back. Come on now, devil, get out of my way. Come on, situation. Say unto this mountain, be thou removed, be cast into the sea, and do not doubt. You shall have what you ask. A history maker is a person who's not willing to sit back on their laurels. Listen, I have a hard time sitting back on my laurels. You can call it ADD, ADHD. You can call it whatever you want to call it. Everybody likes to call those things bad. I hate to tell you, but most of the people that have been makers of big things are people that they have declared that have all these problems. I don't know if you want my personal opinion or not, so I'll just give it to you. My personal opinion is this, is I believe one of the One of the foolish things that we have done is medicate all these kids so much that they have lost their drive in life. Those hellions are the ones. I was a hellion. Brother Kevin was definitely a hellion. I'm being I'm being Have. Drive is important. But the difference between drive and no drive isn't your personality. See, a lot of people, that's their excuse in life. Well, my personality is I'm just quiet. Baloney. You've heard me use the example before? Don't use that with me. Because if I took you out in a boat in the middle of a lake and you could not swim and I threw you overboard and I went away, you wouldn't be going, help me, help me. I'm just reserved. You wouldn't be doing that. You'd be, ah, oh, no, I'm drowning. So don't use the reserved excuse. What it is is that a person with a target has something to aim at. A person who has a destination has a place to drive to. And in Christianity, what happens a lot of times is, well, I'm going to heaven now. Everything's good. Okay, Sarah, Sarah, whatever will be, will be. I'm no Doris Day, you can see. But okay, Sarah, Sarah. The history makers are God himself. God said, let there be. He had to make a determination to do something. Exodus chapter 12, the deliverance of the entire nation of Israel from the Egyptians' hands. There had to be a man who was a history maker. Listen now, you think you got excuses? He started. And he was old. 
Moses was 80 years old when he went back to deliver uh, Israel from the Egyptians' hands. He was 80 years old, and he had a stuttering problem. But God sent him. And he made a determination. I'm just not going to sit back. I'm not going to go to my rocking chair. Come on now. I'm not going to go to my rocking chair. But I'm going to make me a chair. Hallelujah. You know, there are people that just choose to sit back but every person that you see that are going to great, do great things in God aren't, come on now, they're not these people that are considered great. They're people that said, I will have nothing but greatness happen in my life. It's not that they didn't have reason to complain or whine or moan. Listen now, Joshua, when they crossed the Jordan, when they went over to Jericho, God said in Joshua chapter 6, say, look at now, Joshua, see, I've already given you the city. Well, when God said that, the city was still high. The walls were so wide you could have two chariots run across them at the same exact time. The men up on the walls were mocking the children of Israel. There was no way to get in. There was no way to penetrate. But God said, look, I've already given you the city. And he determined in his heart to obey God and to walk like God told him to walk around the city. And on the last day, the trumpet sounded and, man, the walls came a-tumbling down. Why? Because somebody decided... Not that they were great, but they chose to be great. You and I can choose to be great or to just survive. That's your choice. That's not your wife. That's not your husband's problem. That's not your kids. That's not mommy's problem. That's not daddy's problem. That's not you grew up in the boondocks and you had to eat out of the creek. That's your choice to say, I choose to just let things happen, or I choose to make things happen. I can't hear you this morning. Am I boring you? The Gospels, I love this part. John chapter 21, verse 24 and 25. This is the disciple who testifies of these things and wrote these things. Ready? And we know that his testimony is true. Whose testimony? Jesus' testimony is true. And there are so many other things that Jesus did, which were, if they were written one by one, I suppose that even the world itself could not contain the books that would be written about him. Isn't that awesome? What's been written about you? If your family had to sit down and write your history, what would your children write for your historical events. If your children had to sit back, if your wife had to sit back, if your husband had to sit back and write something about history, about your life, what would be penned? Nice guy, nice girl, dressed good, always smelled good? Or would they say, powerful man or woman of God. I learned how to pray by hearing my mom and my dad pray. I learned that God's kingdom was more important than the things of this world because I watched my mom and dad serve God with all of their heart, their mind, their body, soul, and their strength. I I, I know my mom was changed because I watched Jesus come into her life and transform her by the power of God. I watched my dad get healed of a heart problem where God did a supernatural miracle. That woman two weeks ago, her son was here last week. I don't know if he's here this morning or not, but was here last week and said that he walked into the kitchen and saw his ma standing at the kitchen. First time in five years, God did a miracle. He can write that. I saw ma get a miracle from God himself. There's no way anybody could fight this lie about this is what it is. What is your history? If you had to sit down, one of the hardest things to do, you ready, is to be honest with yourself. Honesty is such a lonely word. That's all I know. That's all I know. What do you mean by that? One of the hardest things to do is to honest, be honest with ourselves. The Bible says that judge not lest you be. One of the greatest places that you and I can start judging is who.